Vince and Nationals have played 10 games this year, and the results have been lopsided. The Nats took two out of three in D.C. last week, but it's at City Field where they have really flexed their muscle. Four home runs last night gave the Nationals their ninth straight win at City Field, the longest visitors winning streak since this ballpark opened in 2009, and the Mets can only shake their heads at what the Nats have brought. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the Washington Nationals. Tonight's game is presented by New York's 529 College Savings Program. Well, the Mets have a quarter of the season to go, and if they're going to make any noise over that final quarter of the year, they need to turn the tables against the Washington Nationals. They've got nine more games to go against the Nats, and it all begins tonight as the Mets look to turn things around against the first-place team in their division. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets play the middle game of their series with the Nationals. Nats won last night. They have won 24 of the last 28 games here at City Field. And um, tonight the Mets will try and get even in the series, but I think more importantly they've got to find a way to overcome a team that has really dominated them. Well, you know, they're the best team in the division, number one, and they're on top of the roost right now. Uh, they're a lot further along in their development with their young players and the Mets are, and really in their in their pitching staff as well as in their everyday players. they got a sprinkling of veterans uh, in, in the Nationals lineup, but the, the guys like Desmond have been playing every day for a while. They're, they're further along in their development than Darno, Lagares, Flores, Dendecker. So their Mets are getting their feet wet, and you know what? When you're looking down, looking up at these guys and you're getting beat, you know, down the road when you develop, payback can be very, very painful. Well, the ball tonight goes to a guy who reached a milestone in his last start. Bartolo Colon coming off his 200th career victory goes after the Nationals tonight. Yeah, first, congratulations to that. One of 115 major leaguers that has reached that 200-win plateau. He was outstanding like he's been all year. 11 wins on the season, continues to throw strikes, continues to make every start. Even with some of the young guys going down, he is about as dependable as any starter that they have. And speaking of dependable, the Nats will have Jordan Zimmerman going tonight. One of the best in the National League. He is having a strange season. 11 no decisions and you can see the wins. He has seven wins so far this year. He was much further than that last year when he won 19. But 33 straight starts he's gone and not given up more than two walks A control artist. Mets will try and defend their home field against the Nationals for the first time this season. It's the Mets and the Nats. All the action coming your way tonight right here on SNY.
Baseball on SNY is brought to you by New York's 529 College Savings Program. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com for a free rate quote. By Astoria Bank. By Sin City, a dame to kill for. In theaters everywhere, August 22nd. And by your Tri Honda dealer, hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2014 models. You can follow every Mets game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replays, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Mets.com today. Time to invite you to send in your AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet or Instagram your photo using hashtag SNY fan photo for a chance to have it shown later tonight during the game. The rainy weather has turned sunny. Mets hope for the same with Bartolo Colon on the mound. First pitch coming up from City Field. Bartolo Colon tonight going after career victory number 201 as he takes on the Nationals, whom he's pitched very well against this year. Hyundai's starting lineup for the Nats. Michael Taylor, who made his big league debut last night with a single and a home run, well, he, he gets the leadoff role tonight as Denard Spann gets a day off. Jason Worth also out of the lineup again, had a cortisone shot in his shoulder, will not play the rest of this series. Well, you can see the Caesars numbers for Bartolo on the season. He's going to try to do a little bit of what Doug Fister did for the Nationals last night, and that's just let them hit the ball in the air. Let the outfielders catch it. Michael Taylor takes the first pitch of the game for a strike, and we're underway. Taylor, 23 years old, sixth-round pick in 2009, made his debut last night with a bang, and he's quickly behind on the count 0-2. Taylor was having a bang up year in double A 22 home runs 35 stolen bases in the minor leagues this year. And Cologne three pitches has him looking at all three and that's the first out of the night. Well I don't know what was. Mr. Young Mr. Taylor was thinking about here. That bat was uh, never got off the shoulder. <laughs> So one out of nobody on now is Dribble Cabrera. 
Cabrera had three hits last night. A single and two doubles. Playing just his 10th game for the Nationals since coming over in a deadline deal from Cleveland. He was um, acquired for utility man Zach Walters. Who this afternoon just hit a walk off home run for the Indians. To win a game against Arizona. In the first game of their doubleheader. Cabrera lifts one to center. Ligaris back. And plenty of room to get it to out. And a beautiful segue right there from Lagaris right to your Metropolitan. Home team Lexus defense. Dendecker back in left field. Juan Lagaris, of course, he's the lone ranger out there in center. Flores, he's going to be playing shortstop. Darno behind the plate. I thought that was very informative. You would have been a great DJ back in the day. You understood the value of the segue. <laughs> And I mean that little thing you ride onto the mall. That's right. <laughs> Two out and nobody on. Here's Anthony Rendon. Rendon hit one of the four Nationals home runs that helped them win seven to one last night. The Nationals have now hit four or more home runs at City Field five different times in the last two years, which is as many times as the Mets have hit four or more home runs in this building since it opened. Let's try that again. No, I, I the heard Nats it. have hit four or more home runs five times in their last 16 games at City Field. The Mets have done it five times in 461 games at City Field. Oh my. Strike three called and Cologne off to a fast start. Throws eight pitches and gets the side in order with a couple of strikeouts. That's come to bat with no score. Terry Collins ran out there last night. Matt Dendecker continues to play every day. As does Wilmer Flores playing every day. Well, go ahead, Ron. It's well, you. I was going to say with the Toyota numbers, they can play every day against one of the best pitchers in the National League. His last 28 and two thirds innings, he's struck out 30. That's pretty amazing. Only walked one batter. Mets faced him six days ago and. Zimmerman left that game with a 3 1 lead in the seventh, but left with a couple of men on. And Drew Storen came in, allowed those inherited runners to score, so it wound up a no decision for Zimmerman. Curtis Granderson 0 for his last 11 after taking an 0 for 5 last night, and he takes a strike from Zimmerman. One thing about this game tonight with Colon and Zimmerman, two of the top control artists in baseball, it's no sense waiting around. Mm. Nothing in two to Curtis. Did you look at their statistics and they both have given up a Cologne and Zimmerman more hits and in innings slightly more. They both have 20 walks over the course of this season. They both have 23 starts a very similar. 
Granderson breaks his bat and dumps one in a right field, and the Mets have the first base runner of the night. So Granderson snaps an 0 for 11. Oh, an M110. That was the usual model. A little cutter in, in a good spot, jammed him, but you know, muscled it out. Probably wanted it more upstairs, Ronnie, to get into his kitchen a little more. The M series was the usual series, and the thinnest handle of the M series was the M159, which is the bat that Musial used, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Daniel Murphy had another multiple hit game last night. That's multiple as in Musial. <laughs> there you go. That's 11 multi multi hit games in his last 17 for Murphy. That's how hot he's been. And he owns. And now not many players to say this owns Jordan Zimmerman. 16 for 44. That's a 364 average with three home runs against Zimmerman. David right on deck. Zimmerman's 19th career start against the Mets. And he's only 28 years old. But that's what happens when you play in the same division. So both now Murph kind of looked back at the rookie umpire Stu. Uh, is it Stu or Stewie? Stewie Surewater? Stu Surewater. Stu Surewater. First time we've seen him behind the plate. 0 2 from Zimmerman and Murphy hits a slow ground ball. Cabrera with the flip. And Desmond does the rest for the 4 6 3 double play. So two out and nobody on. And we'll take a look at your national defense. Bernard's fan gets a day off after having a 14 game hitting streak snapped. Friends then gets a start in left. The youngster Taylor goes in center in the same infield here with Zimmerman out. Rendon being all playing third base every day. And the Met killer, former Met, Wilson Ramos behind the plate. Here's David Wright. David had two hits last night. Now has an 11 game hitting streak. It's one of those hitting streaks composed of all singles. David with 14 hits in those 11 games. Still trying to get hot. Lucas Duda would be next. That's a good strike right there up and in. Mm. Looks like Mr. Zimmerman's throwing a little bit harder. Hey, he made the graphics, Keith. Four hitting streaks of 11 or more games, only the second player in Mets history. Joining you. Well, I don't know what to say. That's a, that's a first. <laughs> I'm floored by his <laughs> lack of words. <laughs> It's interesting here in this first inning. Uh, Zimmerman's trying to bully Bright, trying to just pitch yeah. him in this entire at bat. Well, he's a bully pitcher anyway. Yeah. He loves to pound in. I think he needs to be a little wilder around the plate, Ronnie. Every once in a while, put one under a chin. David cracks one into left field for a base hit. Chase toward the line by Franzen. And Wright's going to challenge him, and he is going to be out by oh. a mile. A really, really bad base running decision by David Wright. Not even close. And that ends the inning. Well, you just don't see David making a, a, a poor choice like that very often. And he's, uh, as we used to say, dead as a doornail. You know, David extends his hitting streak to 12, but makes the third out of the inning. No score after one at City Field.
Zaka in the Mets dugout coming off his first rehab stint the other night for St. Lucie coming back from an elbow problem. Pretty much straight up except on the right side of the infield. Boy did I miss that one. That's the big pyramid shift right there. The outfield straight up. Adam LaRoche leading off. It's one out to left. Den Decker moves over to grab it. One out. Well, Bartolo Colon's throwing nine pitches to start this game. Nine strikes. So he's not messing around. Well, they got the big 200 behind him. That's a big uh, weight off his shoulders now. He's in rarefied air back in his home country. Juan Marichal and Pedro Martinez. Yeah, that's rarefied air. Ian Desmond, one for three, hit a two run homer last night. I don't see this very often at uh, City Field, but the, the sun is shining in such a way that Bartolo's almost in a spotlight. Ooh. Broken back grounder. And David Wright handles it with no problem. One away, two away. Thanks to strikeouts for savings, get 30% off Mets tickets for games now through August 18th. Log on to Mets.com slash strikeouts to take advantage of this offer. Well, there's the sun reflecting off the windows and then out onto the field. And always this time of year. Now we had um, a, a brief shower about 45 minutes before the game. Unexpectedly, we thought all the rain had passed. Of course, we had rain beyond biblical proportions on part of Long Island last night. 13 inches yeah. 13 inches of rain. I've never heard of such a thing uh, outside my, of the African rainforest. My good friend Bob Devine has uh, spent the whole day with pumping out three feet of water out of his basement in Bayshore. Well certainly our, our thoughts go out to all the folks that uh, boy just uh, endured all of that rain. I mean, there were towns West Islip uh, Babylon Bayshore where every road was underwater this morning. Just crazy stuff. And we certainly hope everybody got through it OK. Bryce Harper two for four last night including a two run homer. O2 from Cologne and he strikes him out on three pitches. Cologne off to a rollicking start. It's taken him just 14 pitches to get through the first two innings. No score as we go to the bottom of the second. Caster contest presented by New York's 529 College Savings Program makes his broadcast debut. See 12 year old Lucas Sims from Hamilton Square, New Jersey, show off his best play by play skills as he takes a seat here in the SNY booth to call a half inning 
of tonight's game. Got to meet Lucas a few minutes ago. He seems like a very bright kid, and uh, I think he's going to have a lot of fun tonight. Good. It's the big D and the two little D's for the Mets in the second. Mm -hmm. Duda, Darno, and Dendecker. And Duda grounds one down to first. LaRoche handles it. One pitch and one out for Jordan Zimmerman in the home second. LaRoche, a very accomplished first baseman. Father, of course. Lefty pitcher. Knuckleball. Because Part of the had the, uh, the la la yep. that he threw. He was I faced him. He was in Columbus when I was coming up through the minor leagues. He was down for a short time and he was throwing that la la. It was the darndest thing to see. Travis Darnell with one out and nobody on. Travis one for four last night. Who was the famous uh, lob pitcher that Ted Williams hit the home run off oh, of the All Star game? Right, uh, Rip Sewell. Rip Sewell. Yes. But also, um, do you remember Steve Hamilton? He also threw that that Ephus pitch right. late in his career. Got a pitch for the Yankees and then later for the Giants. Wasn't Steve Hamilton the one that got away and hit the Coniglier? No, that? that was Jack Hamilton. Jack, Jack Hamilton, Hamilton also right. pitched for the Mets. Right. Oh, not a good cut. Zimmerman's got that really tight slider tonight. There you go. Well, Darno has been kind of stuck in the 220s. Got some pop. We got nine home runs. One, two from Zimmerman, and the slider off the plate. Two and two. Zimmerman in the 10 year history of the Washington Nationals is the leading winner in Nationals history. 50 victories. Broke Levon Hernandez's I was record. I say, Levon. Line over short and Darno's got a base hit. Well, the Mets have had five batters come to the plate against Zimmerman. They've got three hits. And somehow they haven't left anybody on base. Not a bad slider as far as location, but the ball was up enough for Darno to get it just off the end of the bat. We know this young man's strong enough to get get it and drop it in the outfield. So one out and one on. Now Matt Dendecker, who went 0 for 3 last night. This is his fourth start since returning from AAA. 27 years old. It's his time to get it get it on. Make a make a make a name for yourself. Made the big alteration in his stance, but dropped his hands. Looks a little bit like Chase Utley to me. A little bit, yes, sir. And showed a very quick bat. There's his hands where he's holding them now, down low. He's really made a conscious effort to shorten his swing. Right. And the thing was, I had a talk with Wally Backman today. Uh, I called him in Vegas. Uh, they were in Vegas here in Des Moines. And he just said he was swinging at so many bad breaking balls in the dirt because his hands were up, over in his, up by his chin. And he said, I'll give him credit. He, he listened to uh, was it George Greer down yep. there, who was fabulous. And uh, he took the advice and he stuck with it. And as a result, when he got called up, he was leading the league and hitting at 334. And he was five at bats shy, Ronnie. Of qualifying for the batting title. Now, this would have been two games. So, as a player, would you rather spend two more games in the minors and win a minor league batting title? Or would you rather spend those two extra days in the big league? I'm thinking in terms of making this young man feel good about himself, confident. I would want him to get two more games in the minor leagues and get a get a batting title, get that under his on his resume and make him feel good about himself, then call him up. Three and two to Dendecker. Darno takes off and it's tapped to the left side. Rendon throws out Dendecker, who swung at ball four. Darno ends up at second base. I wonder if there was a hit and run on there. We, the Mets do not hit and run very much. 
you know, I talked with Wally uh, again uh, about Dendecker, and he said that he had him leading off, Gary. And he said that he was just so electric. He was the one guy in the lineup down there that was the the guy that made it happen. And so he said, so I moved him into the third hole. And he was just in there around four or five games, and he got called up. There's Juan Lagares with a runner in scoring position and two out. Lagares one for four last night. Hitting 352 over his last 15 games. And takes the slider off the plate. Last night, these two teams combined to go 0 for 17 with runners in scoring position. The Nats scored seven runs, but they were 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position. All their runs came on home runs, and the Mets were 0 for 8. Mm. That's an awfully good number right there. Two outs and runners in scoring position. That's because Juan goes the other way. Uh, it makes him. It makes you a better two-strike hitter. Those are the toughest RBIs to drive in. Those two-out RBIs. Oh, good cut, a mistake right there. And they also are a dagger into the heart of a pitcher. He's one out away from getting out of a jam, and you drop that two-out base hit on him with two ribeye stakes. It's Devastating. Zimmerman's thrown a lot of pitches down the middle of the plate so far in the first couple of innings. So, you know, he's not on top of his game yet. He's ahead on Lagares, one and two. And he sells the fastball, two and two. And you can look at Zimmerman's physique. He is a very strong man, very strong in the legs. He's a horse. There was a pitcher that pitched with us in the 80s. Bruce Bereni had a body type like that. Yeah. Just. And he also had a wicked slider. <laughs> and Lagares down on strikes. Zimmerman fans him with a slider and he gets out of trouble in the second. First strike after Zimmerman. We go to the third. Mets and Nats no score. Third inning tomorrow night Dylan G takes the mound for the Mets and he's standing by with Kevin Burkhardt. Kevin? All right, Dylan you uh, coming off your best start you know what what clicked for the last time out for you and what do you take from that start. 
Um, you know, I just I felt like I was aggressive that game. Um, you know, luckily I made it through the first couple innings with, uh, you know, I had trouble finding the breaking balls the first couple innings, but we made it through to uh, to regain that form as the game went on, and I felt like I got stronger, which is a good sign. How difficult was it for you? You came off the the DL, and then you made a start in a good one, and then you got the All Star break, so you didn't pitch again for a week. Was it was it hard to kind of get back to that that rhythm after getting back, get the adrenaline going? You know, I mean, it, it, it's probably not ideal, but. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna make any excuses. I just didn't get it done, and that's that's all there is to it, really. But uh, you know, like I said, uh, the last the last few times out, I feel like I'm throwing the ball a lot better, and uh, that's all I'm thinking about. Ramos has a double against Colon here for the Nationals first hit. As we talk to Dylan G, um, you face these guys a lot. You've done pretty well against these guys. What is challenging as you work through their order? Uh, mixing up the looks. I think after you face teams as many times as I face this team, as you just can't be predictable. And uh, you know, I mean, that's my game anyways. Is try to be unpredictable. So uh, just try to read their swings, read what they're looking for, um, and just switch up, switch up the way I'm trying to get them out. Uh, you know, can't get these guys out the same way twice normally. So you just got to keep switching it up. How much do you think about it? when you're playing teams in the division as many times as you do? You know, it's one thing when somebody has eight at bats, ten at bats. When someone's got 20, 20 at bats, how much can you change it up and change up your routine without affecting who you are? Well, I, you know, I think it's the August. They know every pitch I got already, you know, especially facing them this many times. So you can't change your pitches. But, um, you know, just trying to keep them on balance with different different ways you get to an out pitch or different, you know, just different um, scenarios that you're, you're pitching to. I mean, it's just, like I said, it's tough to have a big league hitter get off balance anyways, and it's really tough to make them do it, you know, after seeing you 20 times. You know, Franzen's got a hit, so it's first and third. As we talked to Dylan G, will pitch tomorrow night against these Nationals. I wanted to ask you, watching Montero last night, you know, we talk a lot about a young pitcher coming up, and he's obviously done very well in his minor league career. Take me back for you. You got a taste of it in 2010, and then we're really starting for the most part full-time in 2011. When did you feel like you got it? When did you feel like you kind of belonged here in the majors? Man, I don't know if you ever feel like you got it. I mean, this, it's a struggle every day to stay in the big leagues. This is why this is the best players in the world. You know, every day you got to work hard to, to stay up here. But, um, you know, I think I think once you have a nice, a nice streak of outings and, and you have a little bit of success, it's easier to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm good enough to pitch up here and, and have that confidence and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you just got to be the same guy that, that got you here in the first place. And a lot of times I think people want to think they need to do more because it's the big leagues. But, uh, you know, if you're successful in AAA and you got here, you might as well just keep doing what made you successful and just and build from that. It's interesting you say that because, you know, you're such a smart guy. But what do you think Raphael's thinking right now because he's, he's a young guy and – you know, he knows what he's done has gotten him to this point. And even though it's a small sample size, it hasn't worked so far. So what do you think goes through his head in this small time? You know, I, I don't know because I'd hate to, you know, I don't want to put words in people's mouth. I don't know what he's thinking. But, uh, you know, I'm sure maybe just, you know, that's tough to pitch in this league. But yeah. uh, he's got the stuff. I and mean, we all know he's got the stuff. We've seen him have success in spring training. And uh, we've seen the way he can throw the ball. Uh, you know, he's known as a strike throw, and you just kind of saw him fall behind the guys yesterday and, and, and his other previous outings up here. And like I said, if he just has the confidence, you know he has the stuff, and uh, you know, I think he'll be fine. I asked this, I'll let you go after this, but I asked this to Jonathan Nice uh, yesterday. You're, you're, you're a veteran of this group now. You know, do you feel, is there a certain uh, responsibility that comes with that from, from being on a staff with a lot of younger, inexperienced guys? Um, you know, I mean, I guess uh, I, it's tough for me to think of myself as a veteran already, really. But uh, you know, I try not to. I'm not. I'm not trying to act like I know everything. You know, what I mean, because I don't. I'm still trying to figure this stuff out too. I mean, we're always learning. But um, but we're here to learn together, and that's the big thing. And to, to show these guys that hey, it's it's hard to talk, and you know, pick my brain. I'll pick your brain. There's still stuff I'm learning from these young guys too. I mean, uh, you know, I think we all just do a good job of of collaborating together to to learn about. You know each other and, and what makes everybody else successful, and um, you know I try to just you know show them you know lead by example of preparation and stuff like that, and uh, you know let them be them. Yeah, thanks uh, for the time. Good luck uh, tonight and good luck tomorrow when you're out there. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Dylan G. Couple of outs for Cologne with runners on first and third. Gary. All right, thank you, Kevin, and thanks to Dylan. Meanwhile, Cologne doing uh, quite a job trying to extricate himself from a jam here in the third. Well, he kind of toyed with the youngster, Mr. Michael Taylor there. Remember, he took Taylor the first at bat, three straight fastballs, struck out, looking, didn't get the bat off the shoulder. Cologne sensed he was going to be aggressive that at bat, didn't throw him a strike, Ronnie. Right. Now is Drupal Cabrera with first and third and two down. Cabrera fly to center his first time up. Ramos at third, Franzen at first, and a first pitch strike. That is 24 pitches, 22 strikes. 
for Cologne thus far. It's very simple this game. It's simple for Bartolo at times, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love the watch of Pitt. He's got a full doctorate in pitching. And Cabrera hits one to Flores. He'll go to first with it. And that retires the side. So the Nats at first and third, and nobody out, and they do not score. Cologne pulls himself out of it. Our Kim Caster joins us when we come back to City Field. We're very pleased to welcome into the booth our annual SNY Kid Caster, Lucas Sims. Lucas, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you. So, how did you get here? What was the process of, of winning this Kid Caster contest? Um, I had to write a 100 word or less essay, um, and you submit it online. And if you are one of the top 10 essays, you go to New York to the SNY studios and you call two to three plays that are like highlights from the Mets season. And then if you're first, second or third place winner, you get a call from SNY and they tell you that you've won. And you got the call when? Um, on my birthday, May wow. 21st. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Uh, that was a great birthday present. So here you are tonight and have you been practicing for this uh, for this moment? Yes, I am. If a home run is hit or just a normal base hit up the middle, I'm ready for it. Very good. That's, good. That's more than Keith and I. Very good. <laughs> well, Wilmer Flores is leading off, and uh, after Wilmer's at bat is is over, we're gonna we're gonna put you in the play-by-play -play chair. Now, oh where boy. do you go to school? What grade are you in? Um, I go to. U oh, I'm going into Reynolds Middle School in Hamilton. I had just gotten done University Heights Elementary School, and. Uh, where I am now. Now I understand you came pretty close to being here last year. Yes. How close? Um, I was the second place winner mm -hmm. and I got to interview Chris Carlin and Mr. Bobby Ojeda uh, for Kids Clubhouse and that was a really fun interview for me because Bobby was a former player and Chris is like a broadcaster I get to meet and get some tips from. That's great. Now what was your essay about? Um, what skills in school could help you become a better broadcaster? And like it had to be 100 words or less as I said and then I submitted it and they called me to go to studio. So what skills in school help you be a good broadcaster? Um, definitely math because all the stats and everything like averages, ERAs, um, and just like good character, like they teach you good character from like first grade. Um, to have good sportsmanship with other players and to be kind on the field and as, as well as off the field. All right, Lucas Sims from Hamilton, New Jersey. One out at the bottom of the third, no score in the game. It's all yours. Here's Bartolo Colon. He's two for 46 in his at bats. No RBIs, no home runs. Here he is, starting pitcher for the Mets. 
got his 200th win a few nights back. I actually was at that game, and he takes strike one, 95 mile an hour fastball. And he fouls one off in a quick 0-2 count for the Mets pitcher. Bartolo Colon, 41 years of age. Had a really good year with the athletics last year, and here he is, 0-2. Ground ball, shortstop. Bobbles it, and recovers, and he's out. For a second, I thought he was going to be safe there. <laughs> and then I remember the speed. Lucas, this is the greatest two minutes in sports right here. <laughs> Home to first in a year and a half. <laughs> well, we almost. <laughs> And here's Curtis Granderson. He's one for one today. And he takes strike one down the middle. I believe he broke his bat his first time up. You got it. Sounded like it, at least. Outside corner and quick go to count to Curtis as well as the at bat before, like Cologne. And an upstairs pitch taken by Granderson. One and two. Curtis, the leadoff hitter, playing right field. And he struck him out, foul tipped, held by the catcher. And we will go to the fourth. Lucas Sims, fantastic job. Thank you. Our 2014 SNY Kid Caster. We uh, we really appreciate you being here and you did Thank a you. wonderful job. Awesome Thank you. Man. I wish Thank we could have had a little more action. For yeah. You. <laughs> hey, Cologne going home to first. Not too many people get to call that kind of a lengthy at that. <laughs> Thanks to Lucas Sims. We'll be going to the fourth. We have the Mets and Matt Scorler. Thank you. Anthony Rendon leads off the fourth inning against Bartolo Colon, who has just been pumping in strike after strike. Keith, when you have two pitchers like this who are just throwing nothing but strikes, at what point does everybody start getting uber aggressive? Well, it's not uber aggressive, but it's certainly you're you love guys that throw strikes, and you still got to have an idea. They're two entirely different pitchers, Gary. You've got Colon. Who was very much like Fister was last night, changes speeds, moves the ball in and out. Where you've got uh, Zimmerman, who's a power pitcher. So 
the approaches for each offensive lineup is different. You don't want to get over anxious and play into the hands of Cologne's mastery of changing pitches. Uh, you got to be aggressive but patient and really kind of work him up the middle. Zimmerman, you can go to Whalen. He's going to throw you a strike. It's going to be, you know, it's pretty much one on one, mano a mano. The, the problem you have with Cologne is that when you start being aggressive, he starts not throwing strikes. He starts throwing the ball just off the plate. As opposed to Zimmerman, as Keith was saying, is totally different. I, I said bullying, bullying before. He just wants to go and kind of in three pitches either strike you out or get you out. I mean, he doesn't want to mess around at all. And Rendon lays off the slider, two and two. So Cologne is now throwing four balls out of 30 pitches. Adam LaRoche on deck, then Ian Desmond in the fourth. And Rendon takes a little bit high, full count. Well, where Stu Sherwater is a low ball umpire, he doesn't call the high strike. So it's much like Dutch Renner. Three two. Fouled away. And those of you who don't know who Dutch Renner was, I'm kind of dating myself here. Dutch Renner was one of the great umpires in the National League and Ronnie and our generation. But he was in a, called the corners perfect, but he gave the pitcher that low strike. He was consistent, but he wouldn't give the pitcher that high one. And he had a very unusual way of calling strikes. Line into center field, and the Nats have their third hit off Cologne. So Rendon a leadoff single. Dutch would take a full step back from the plate, turn to the side, and bellow at the top of his lungs. Point his right hand up in the air, and then bring it down, and like point it, and have the big bellowing voices, right? And you'd be in the on deck circle, in the first base on deck circle, he'd be looking right at you, and I'd be smiling at him. I often <laughs> thought that Leslie Nielsen. Yes. <laughs> In his role in Naked Gun, got his strike call from watching Dutch Renner. The, uh, other than the moonwalk with it, yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Dutch never broke out the moonwalk <laughs> that I'm aware of, but poetic license. Here's LaRoche who fly to right his first time and Lone sells a change up outside. I know they have the shift on, on LaRoche. The Roche hits a lot of balls to left field. I, I, I know that his power, he can hit it out anywhere and he hits a lot of balls to the right side. But when he wants to, and if, if Cologne is going to pitch him away, he can go that way. Well, they got the outfield. When you look where Den Decker is playing, he's playing him like an opposite field hitter. So the charts must be if he goes to uh, upper left hand part of your screen, Den Decker there, he's playing way over as if we got an inside out hitter. So the charts must show that when he hits the ball to left field, they're in the air. Because they're certainly giving him the left side of the infield on the ground. And you can drive a armored division through there. Rendon, a dozen stolen bases on the year. And now Cologne behind on LaRoche 2 0. And, and I got to believe right here, the left hand hitter in LaRoche, the way. Uh, Cologne pitched him the first two at bats. This is the second at bat now. Pitching him very carefully. This is the one hitter in the line doesn't want him. Uh, Cologne doesn't want to have hurt him. And keeping it away, three and zero. We've talked a lot about the Nationals' dominance here. Nine straight wins at City Field, and so much of it has had to do with their ability to mash the ball. Mm -hmm. 26 home runs in those nine straight wins, including four last night. Well, they have a nice balanced lineup, Gary. If you look, they got you know left, right, left, right, through the middle, and they've got a nice blend of power hitters as well. They got some table setters too. I'm liking Rendon more and more every time I look at him. Three one coming. And LaRoche fouls it away. Notice that Cologne will not give him that 88 to 92 mile an hour fastball. He is just taking a little off and running it away from LaRoche. Just turning it over just enough, taking a little off that he's out in front. 
Now he could get him if he can make the pitch. That 3 2 fastball in that he throws at his hip. And we'll see if Rendon is let loose here. Second straight full count for Cologne. Rendon does not run and LaRoche takes inside ball four. So Cologne who walks very few issues his first in this game and the Nats for the second straight inning have the first two men on. Question Ron. That entire at bat right there Cologne pitched him away. And then he wanted to go three and two in and yeah. get him. When you throw five pitches and get three and two and are all away, is it tough to try to throw to the inside corner? It's like a 25% success rate. It really okay. is hard to, to stay out in a certain way and then all of a sudden change lanes on that one pitch when you need it. So two men on for Ian Desmond, who broke his bat and grounded out to David Wright his first time up. Rendon at second, LaRoche at first, and nobody out. And Cologne, who threw just two balls in the first three innings, has thrown eight already in this inning. He does something a, a little interesting when he gets out of whack. He sits a little too low, mm. so his arm angle drops. He's always got to try to stay, stay tall, stand tall, not kind of drop his backside and get underneath the baseball. Well, I don't think anybody's going to be going anywhere. They got the meat of the lineup up right now. Desmond and Harper and Ramos, who's already got a double today and seems to kill the Mets. Cologne always does a very nice job controlling the running game. Only three stolen bases against him this season. And really keeping his eye on Rendon. He did when he was at first and doing it now when he's at second. Well, Murph's right next to him. So Murph's not exactly not ignoring him. I mean, you could put a pickoff play on right there where Murph's at. Desmond takes Cologne away, and again Cologne falls behind 2-0. Oh. Dangerous pitch right here. Desmond hit his 20th home run last night. He's got two home runs and seven career at bats against Cologne, so he's understandably going to be careful with him. He wants to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Keep it down. Keep it away. Let him try to pull it. If he does, it'll be on the ground. That's what you want. Oh boy. Well, it will be a, not necessarily a take here. Ron, do you throw this pitch right now with little trepidation? Uh, you do because Harper's up next and he struggled all season long. And this uh, Desmond's red hot. I think uh, they'll let him swing here. And Matt Williams will. 3 0 with two men on. And Desmond takes a strike. Five of Desmond's 20 home runs have come against the Mets this season. Now, as a hitter here, you can run, oh, you got two options. You can look middle in, try to hit a home run, or you can say, okay, I'm just going to further the, the rally. I'm going to look away and try to drive one in the gap to the opposite field. 3 1, and there's a generous strike. 3 and 2. Well, Keith is right. If it's off the plate, but it's down, you'll get the call. Yep. If it's off the plate and up, you will not. And that and that's nip and corner. Third straight full count for Cologne to start this fourth inning. Stu Sherwater, the rookie home plate umpire. Rendon at second, LaRoche at first, and nobody out. Three two coming to Desmond. And he fouls it away. Keeping it away on three and two. I tell you what, three straight knee-high outside corner paint jobs right there. After we went three and zero. Oh. Yep. Well, over the last three years, nobody has more home runs against the Mets than Ian Desmond. I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have thought Freeman, yeah, the Roche. But Desmond has been there time and again. Again, the 3 2. Ooh, good cut at that high fastball. Got away with the pitch there. Just high enough. Wanted it away. After three straight knee high outside corners, a boo boo. And he gets away with it. Quite a stride by Desmond. His front foot almost outside the box as Cologne tosses that baseball. And <laughs> 
Tries to think about where he's going here. Three two. Well, that's why Desmond strikes out a lot. He took a swing like it was three and oh. Rendon single to Roche walked. Already 21 pitches in the inning for Cologne and still working. After throwing just 25 in the first three innings combined. Double play ball to Murphy. Flores with the turn. In time. Four six three double play. Two out. Boy, what a beautiful play here. Murph got rid of it quickly, and a good strong throw from Flores. And needed. It's a double play that we've seen the Mets struggle at times with, and they needed to have it there. And Flores turned it. Uh, if you're a pitcher and you are in a jam like that, and you get that ground ball, you want the two. That's a pitcher's best friend right there. Gets you out of a whole lot of trouble. Flora is able to avoid the traffic with LaRoche coming in on him. So two out. Rendon now at third. And here's Bryce Harper who struck out on three pitches his first time up. Facing a pitcher 20 years his senior. No. 86, 87 against LaRoche, 93 there, Keith. Watch his body, Harper. He pulls away on his swing. And I just don't see how he can hit an outside pitch when he does that. It's very funkadelic. And Harper quickly in an 0 2 hole. I'll tell you what, Cologne is a beauty. Well, in the third inning, the Nats at first and third, and nobody on. Cologne worked through it. Here they had first and second, and nobody out. And in his hardest working inning yet, he's one strike away from getting through it. Came right after Harper, two straight gas attacks. O2 to Harper, up and away. That's a purpose pitch right there. Wilson Ramos would be next. Just trying to get Harper to chase. He did not. Too far away. You notice Harper's stride was straight in. So see if he's going to stay away. Off the plate. Two and two. So very interesting here. He stayed away from Harper. Crowd ooing and eyeing because the pitch hit the glove, but the glove was well off the plate. I can't call strikes from the upper tank. We used to try. <laughs> two two. Strike three called. Got him on that two seam fastball. Six strikeouts for Cologne, and for the second straight inning, the Nats get the first two men on, but do not score. He had Harper bailing. Still no score at City Field.
Three of Jeremy Hefter impact the way the Mets handle Matt Harvey. Tell us what you think at hashtag SNY tweet. Another guy who underwent Tommy John surgery this year, the Marlins young star Jose Fernandez, about to do a stint on Marlins radio tonight. Nice. It'll be interesting to listen to. Daniel Murphy leads off of the Mets in the home fourth inning. Murphy grounded into a double play his first time up. Well, it makes sense that Fernandez should go on the air with the Marlins as Murphy lifts one to right center and Taylor is there for the first out. After all, we had our kid caster on tonight. It's, it is a kid so caster. Marlins down there. Think about him, right? <laughs> I thought Lucas did a great job. He was fabulous, wasn't he? He was a good kid. I saw his parents outside um, and they were just you know, beaming like only parents can beam when something like that happens. Pretty cool. I actually in Triple A in Tulsa, Gary. I had a knee injury and I missed the first uh, three weeks of the season. And I went up in the radio booth with and did play-by-play -play for around one, one week. And guess who the play-by-play -play guy on the radio was? Yeah. Steve Zabriskie. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Later a Mets broadcaster. David Wright takes a strike. I'd love to hear the tape. Oh, I. Uh, it was a. Jim Dwyer got a triple in the gap with the bases loaded and I messed up. Oh, okay. it was too much going on. <laughs> so you were actually doing play by play. Yes, I was with him. Yep, I had fun. David lifts one out to right and Harper is there. And quickly Zimmerman has the first two outs in the fourth. Well, we all have uh, our early tapes. The first one I ever made for real was at a Freshman football game when I was a freshman in college. It's the worst thing you've ever heard. Well, you gotta start somewhere, right? Right. I mean, we've all had our beginnings, right? Duda again, a big shift for Big Lucas. The first time I ever did TV, I took the four o'clock from LAX to Oakland. Got in at 515, did the six o'clock show to seven o'clock before the Oakland A's game. It was on the eight o'clock back to LA as soon as it was done. Oh nine. wow. That's hard to do. Did you know what you were going to be talking about? <laughs> when you when you landed at 515? It was <laughs> very big on the conference call in those days. Let's see. Was that with Big Mel? <laughs> no, no, no. That wasn't with Mr. Proctor. <laughs> Due to ground it out to first base his first time, and he takes a fastball for a strike one and two. Well, was it when you did your first broadcast in, with the Nationals? That you well, that's the uh, that's the, the formal. This was just like a pregame, right? Yeah. That so it was so it your first game you you met on the way to the ballpark. That's uh, we met at the uh, Four Seasons in Philadelphia. In fact, we're only our producer and director. That's only in case they'll stay. But um, the uh, we met there. We got lost on the way to Citizens Bank Park. And uh, and we did 155 games, <laughs> and we suffered from a little bit what the the, the, the Dodgers are right. suffering from now. Uh, it was hard to get on the air at that right. Point. Didn't have clearance. And Not that a was lot what of people could see. Line nice. into center field and Duda's got a base hit. Nice hitting, Lucas. Hey, two strikes. You can't swing for the downs. This is a pitcher's pitch. Look at that. That's nice hitting. Well done. It's interesting about watching hitters, and I know nothing about hitting. Is is how they get better over the course of the season. That's a pitch he never would have hit right. in April or May. So the Mets have their fourth hit. And now here's Travis Darno, who singled in the left center his first time up. Tomorrow night, the final game of this series, your city probables. Mets will face Steven Strasburg for the first time this season. Dylan G, who made his big league debut against the Nats and has always pitched well against them, will go for the Mets. You realize he had that many punch outs. Strasburg leading the league. Isn't he? Whoa. I mean, it's been an up and down year for Strasburg in so many respects, and he's pitched so poorly on the road, but the strikeouts have been. Very high. Verizon trivia question the four oldest pitchers to throw a perfect game. I know we looked this up when Bartolo was working on one in Seattle. That's right. 
High fly ball to left field. Got under it. And Franzen is coming in. And he drops it. Lucas Duda turning third, heading for the plate. The throw is cut off, and the Mets get the first run of the game. Wow. Well, earlier in the ball game, David Wright tried to take an extra base on the converted infielder Kevin Franz, and it was thrown out by a mile. This time, the converted infielder dropped a routine fly ball. Well, it's. Unforgivable. You're playing out of position and you're a one handed all star. Uh, that's just unforgivable. I'm sorry. It's an error all the way against Franzen. You know, it's interesting if he had hit the cutoff man, Lucas would have been out at home also. Yep. He threw the ball all the way home. I think he panicked once he dropped yeah, the ball. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So Duda scores for first on the air and the Mets lead it 1 0. Now Dendecker hits a sharp ground ball, but Desmond had him played perfectly, and that retires the side. So the Mets cash an unearned run in the bottom of the fourth and lead it one nothing as we go to the fifth. Cubs game this Saturday as part of the Mets concert series presented by Dwayne Reed. Catch Boys to Man live in concert this Saturday. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash concerts. How many concerts are the Mets putting on this summer? I think this will be the third, and I think there's one more after that. You've got Austin Mahone the last weekend of the season. They're going to put the garden out of business. <laughs> well, you know, Billy Joel played at Shea. Now he's the artist in residence at the That's garden. Right. Wilson Ramos leads off in the fifth inning. Bartolo Colon with the lead for the first time. After the unearned run that the Mets were gifted in the bottom of the fourth. Ramos had the first hit against Colon. That's not a shot. Double down the left field line. I'd like to see this young man have to play 130 games, play a whole year, see what he'd do. Not Franzen, Wilson Ramos. Franzen who made the errors on deck. Well, Ramos this year already has had a broken hand and a hamstring injury, two different trips to the DL. And then he had a baby last week and missed the series against the Mets. He lifts this one to fairly deep right, but playable for Granderson. A step out of the track to get it. One out. But you don't have to convince the Mets about Ramos. Yeah. He's only hitting over 370 against the Mets in his career. Don't you think the um, the Minnesota Twins would love to have him back? That's right. He's, I'll never forget his first game. He was taking the place of Joe Mauro. I don't know if Joe won on the DL or whatever. He went four for four in the game, or one of his first games with the Minnesota Twins. But they didn't think he'd ever be a catcher in their system. 
Well, off the heel of his glove. He's never take it for granted. The Lord gave you two hands. And not for what you think. The Lord gave you two hands to catch fly balls, ground balls. Oh, and two to Franzen, who had a base hit to right his first time up, but Cologne gets him on three pitches this time. So Franzen unable to redeem himself in that at bat, and Cologne has his seventh strikeout of the night. I think that was on his mind out there. That that is uh, rubbing your your nose in it right there. No sympathy. Still got two more at bats though. Here's Zimmerman, who struck out trying to bunt his first time up. That was a big out for Cologne. They had first and third and nobody out. And Zimmerman struck out on three pitches, unable to get a bunt down. Got to help yourself. Lagaris retreating, and he runs it down to end the inning. Zimmerman gave one a ride. Lagaris equal to the task. Easy inning for Cologne. Halfway through, one nothing Mets. For an inside look at Jets and Giants camp with up to the minute news, interviews, and player profiles, plus a complete breakdown of all the latest developments straight from camp on the JetsBlog.com and BigBlueBlitz.com, all part of the SNY.TV blog network. Fifth inning recap presented by Jeep. Mets have an unearned run on a Kevin Franzen drop fly ball. That's been enough for Bartolo Colon so far. Colon has been special tonight. 60 pitches and in five innings, seven strikeouts. Gotten out of a couple of jams and looked uh, looked like a guy who's won 200 games in the big yeah. games. You, you can't tell if he's losing a game or, or winning a game. SNY's super slow motion is brought to you by Mercedes and your. Mercedes Benz tri state dealers visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Juan Lagares leads off in the home fifth inning against Jordan Zimmerman. Oh, nice and slider. Good slider to start him off. He had got a steady diet of those his first time up and struck out. Well, I guarantee, I'll tell you what, if you're Kevin Franzen, you don't want this game to wind up one nothing. Always go back to that one game. I don't know if you guys remember it. It was on a Sunday, and it was Johan Santana against Josh Johnson. In Miami. 
Roche over near the railing, but that's out of play. Murph was in left field, yep. dropped a similar kind of fly ball, and that was it. One nothing in two hours and four minutes. Well, I do recall a rather important game that you might have lost one nothing on there. We can't go there because it, it, it hurts oh. someone's feelings. Floodgates opened. <laughs> game one, yep. 1986 World Series. Lagares drives one to center and Taylor racing back got turned around but finds it and oh. makes a terrific play. Well, they've been raving about Taylor's defense. And that time he got twisted on a knot and still made a great well, play. Oh, he got a little nervous there. <laughs> he got turned around twice here. Watch, folks. Then you go, no, the other way, and he backpedaled. Well, I tell you what, that's athletic right there. And when you start backpedaling, that is it means you're going to get on your heels, and that ball starts bouncing. Nice recovery. I have heard outfielders talk about the adjustment to the three-deck stadium. You know, you play in the minor leagues; it's one-deck stadiums. The, the ball doesn't come out of stands as high as they do. I, I just I yeah. wonder what that really is like mm. if you've never played in a in a major league stadium for the first time. And whether that has an impact on picking up a ball like that. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think it's a combination. Of, it's the second game in the big leagues. Played right field last night, uh, center field today. That's what you're seeing. Flores pops one up on the infield. And Cabrera uses two hands. I two would, out. I would think, Garrett, with the one level, the one tiered minor league stadium. But the, it might be more difficult because the ball will get up into the uh, to a, you know, a, a, a twilight sky, or at least you got a little more time to get a bead on a ball from from the from the three decks. But certainly more swirling in the in the in major league ballparks. And it is blowing. Cologne struck one. Sharply to shortstop his first time up. Desmond bobbled it, but Cologne, who was not running hard, was still thrown out easily. Mm. Two and one, which leaves him halfway from a walk, which he's never had. 156 plate appearances, never walked. And now it's two and two. Crowd loves watching his at bats. Everything he does draws a reaction. They love everything about him. They love watching him pitch. Uh, they stand up when they anticipate him striking out. His helmet stays on. He must have gone to a smaller size. <laughs> and he foul tips it. Stays alive. I'll tell you what, Bartolo has an idea up there. He knows what he's doing. He's a threat. Not pretty. Mm. Oh, it got a sure water right in the bicep. Mm. Shook it off though. Not as bad as the hit Mike Winters took the other mm. day. That was ugly. And Cologne down on strikes to end the inning. Third strikeout for Jordan Zimmerman. We have played five now at City Field. Cologne and the Mets up one nothing.
Universal Orlando Resort, where you'll enjoy the action and fun of two amazing theme parks, plus stay on site at the new Universal Cabana Bay Beach Resort. Just go to sny.tv slash Toyota and enter the Toyota Fan Flyaway Sweepstakes for your chance to win. Your Mets upcoming schedule brought to you by Astoria Bank. Final game of this series tomorrow night, Dylan G against Steven Strasburg. Then the Cubs are in for four games starting on Friday night. And then it's off to the West Coast as the Mets go to Oakland for two and Los Angeles for three. Michael Taylor leads off in the sixth inning for the Nats, and we check in with Kevin Burkhart. Kev? Well, for a 23 year old who's been here for a couple of minutes, I would say that Michael Taylor has, has quite the presence about him, and it's easy to see why if you trace his roots. His mom and dad were both officers in the Army. He was born in Chicago, and he said shortly after that, they, they got out of service or retired, I should say, and moved to Florida. He said, You know what we did? Uh, we missed the T ball cutoff, so my dad signed me up for softball, but I loved it. You know, it was kind of a mixed league, play with boys and girls, and it really got me into the sport. And what my dad tried to do, and, and my mom is just trying to get me uh, integrated in lots of different things to see what I like. So my dad was a huge hoops guy. I think he was leaning towards that direction. And I played some hoops in high school, but baseball was always my first love. How about this? Grew up with five sisters, all older than him. I asked him what that was like. He said, well, it was like having five moms. That's what it was like. <laughs> and the biggest thing he got from that upbringing with those five sisters and with, of course, the mom and dad who were both in the service, he said respect. Respect to everyone. He gave it to me today. It was a pretty impressive young man, guys. Well, it's all about parenting, is it not? It's so critical. Teller has struck out his first two at bats against Cologne. You know, there's a little connection between Michael Taylor and the Mets' Matt Dendecker. They went to the same high school, and even though he's younger than Dendecker, he said the JV and varsity always work together, and he said, I always wanted to be Matt Dendecker someday. So, always admired the way that Dendecker played at the same high school. And he strikes out for the third time today. That is eight strikeouts for Bartolo Colon, just one shy of his season high. Well, he's having fun with the youngster, the 23 year old rookie. Well, when uh, when Taylor hit the home run yesterday to the opposite field, Doug Fister said to him as he came back to the dugout, he said, It's that easy, huh? <laughs> well, I guess day two, it's not quite so easy. Right. One out and nobody on now as Drupal Cabrera, who's fly to center and grounded to short, 0 for 2. Guys are talking about the 23 year old rookie. How about Matt Williams watching this game, who was a teammate of Bartolo Colon his first year in Cleveland? <laughs> he said that live batting practice, he was throwing 100. That was no fun. Mm -hmm. It shows you how Colon has refined himself over the last couple of decades. Then Decker retreating. And Cabrera retired two out. Let's check in with the studio for a game break. Michelle Yu brought to you by your local Tri Honda dealer. I'm with you, Robin. It's a nightmare. In that game, Jake Peavy snapped his 12 game losing streak and got his first win for the Giants. Seven straight retired by Cologne, two out for Anthony Rendon. So Kevin mentioned Cologne and the Indians. Cologne with 200 wins for eight different teams. The most wins he had for any team was Cleveland. He had 75 wins for them, his first stop. There are only three other pitchers who've won 200 games who've had that few wins as their most wins for any team. The last one was Bobo Newsom. I was looking at Bobo Newsom's record today because it's got such a great name. The traveling man. It's unbelievable <laughs> how much he moved around. Listen to this. He started out in Brooklyn. Then went to the Cubs, the St. Louis Browns, the Washington Senators, the Red Sox, back to the St. Louis Browns, Detroit, back to the Senators, back to Brooklyn, back to the Browns, back to Washington, 
the Philadelphia A's back to Washington again the Yankees the Giants back to Washington and to Philadelphia to finish his career. That's crazy. <laughs> Rendon flies out side retired eight in a row set down by Cologne who hasn't made nearly as many moves in his career. I wasn't listening. Can you repeat that. <laughs> As brought to you by Wise. Game time is crunch time with an all star lineup of Wise snacks. Let's answer our Verizon trivia question. Oldest pitchers to throw a perfect game. Big units, one of those. Have he is the oldest. Cy. Conehead. George. Dennis Martinez, El Presidente. I was there for that one, Dennis Martinez for in Los Angeles. This Washington franchise, mm -hmm. when right. they were known as the Expos. Curtis Grandison leads off in the home sixth inning. Curtis has one of the Mets' four hits. A broken bat single to right in the first. Grandison Murphy and right, third time through the Mets' batting order against Jordan Zimmerman, who's given up just an unearned run. No walks, three strikeouts over the first five. 19 hitters faced, 16 first pitch strikes. Mm. Well, Cologne and Zimmerman both have filled the strike zone tonight. <laughs> How much of a control pitcher is Jordan Zimmerman? The last time he issued back to back walks, 80 starts ago. Two and a half years since he issued back to back walks. Strikes out Granderson with a slider. Fourth strikeout for Zimmerman. One down in the sixth. It's that little cutter, Keith. Good spot. Swung right under it. This is Zimmerman's 19th start against the Mets over his career. And he's only 5-5. Five and five. I would have thought it was better than that because he's had so many good games against them. Well, he's had a, a game like he had last time. Right. He's winning 3-1 when he left, and he got a no decision. 11 no decisions on the season this year. The funny thing is, normally when a pitcher has a lot of no decisions, it's usually a sign he's been unlucky. In Zimmerman's case, mm -hmm. He has not pitched particularly well in his no decisions. 4.37 ERA in those 11 starts. Been kind of an odd year for him in many respects. Murphy pops one up. And Rendon puts it away. Two out. 
So Murphy 0 for 3 on the night. Well, he's obviously pitched great in his wins, but actually better in his losses than in his no decision. That's very unusual. Yes, it is. So he has been, to tell you the truth, kind of fortunate that his record is, it could be worse. Right. Funny thing is, his overall ERA this year is lower than it was last year when he won 19 games. So who knows? David Wright one for two, and he drives one to left field. Franzen took the great circle route, and he makes the sliding catch. And Dos Manos. Well, he didn't have a choice this time. It might have <laughs> hurt him if he hadn't caught it this time. Franzen who dropped one earlier to give the Mets their only run this time able to make the connection one nothing after six. Seventh inning, Bartolo Colon working with a one nothing lead. Adam LaRoche, the last man to reach against Colon. He walked in the fourth inning. And right before that pitch was thrown, David Wright, who was over in a shortstop position, ran about 10 steps toward the third base line, thinking maybe this would be the spot LaRoche would try and lay one down. Did you see him? He's saying, Tough, where do you want me to play? He's asking Tim Tuffel. Who's in charge of where you play in the, in the infield defense? Yeah, one nothing game here in the seventh. You don't want to lead off single. And you can just see that there's Tuffy. Tuffy wasn't very happy when he'll watch the game tomorrow about us bringing up game one in the World Series. Well, it's a matter of public records. On some people's record more than others. Driven toward the gap in right center. Lagaris won't be able to get to it. It short hops the wall. And LaRoche pulls into second base with a leadoff double. Well, he never gets cheated. Right down the middle, wanted it away. Mistake. And LaRoche. Who normally hits it out of the ballpark right there, just short hops the wall. Look at the eyes on the ball, all you youngsters. And let's see what Desmond Desmond's approach is here. Very critical. You got a situational hit here late in the game. One run ball game. And I bet you Cologne's gonna pound him in, Ronnie. We'll see. Desmond hit one to the right side his last time up. That was a double play ball. Takes a big rip and fouls it back. Desmond doesn't know any other way but uh, pedal to the metal on his swing. This is just a vicious cut. 
Well, the Nats had two prime scoring chances in the third and fourth. Third inning, they got a leadoff double from Ramos. First and third, nobody out, and Colon got out of it. And they got the first two men out in the fourth before Desmond grounded into a double play. Now, Desmond has no intention of going the other way in these first two swings. Let's see if he alters with two strikes. This is just something you have to do. You know, you want to drive the run in. That's optimal, obviously. Number one, you tie the ball game, you keep the rally going, but you do it going the other way. Second best is the ground ball or the fly ball deep enough to advance the runner to third. Colonna struck out eight tonight. And then Desmond tried to go the other way, fouls it off. I think Tony DeRusso used to say it. Interesting. Uh, Keith used to say 95% of your at bats are for you, 5% are for me and the team. It's an interesting way to put it, right? Yep. yep. I, would, I would say that's low. <laughs> really shading Desmond in the outfield to, to the opposite field. Granderson was like hugging the line. Oh, and two to Desmond. Back up the middle, he's got a base hit. LaRoche to third, he'll be held up there against the arm of Lagaris. And his good base coaching by Bob Henley. And down to second goes Desmond as the Mets oh. were not able to handle the cutoff. Oh, no. This is inopportune, and this is how you lose ball games. So there's Lagaris with the quick jump in. Overthrew Duda. And that's heads up by Desmond. Didn't take anything for granted. That's super base running. So it'll be an error charge to Lagaris. The Mets are going to concede a run here. Well, you got to. Yep. Basic could give the Nats the lead. So you'll take the out in this spot. Bryce Harper, the batter, second and third, and nobody out. Alone with his toughest jam yet. And he finds the inside corner to Harper. Same pitch he struck him out on his last time up, and again he had Harper bailing out. Well, he just sent another message right there. No adjustment. You got all those computers, guys. What are you watching? Cartoons? Harper has struck out in both his at bats tonight, swinging in the second, looking in the fourth. And Cologne could certainly use a couple of strikeouts right now. He's going to go away now. Maybe back in, Ron. He has two options here. And Harper shortening up on the bat as though he's going to bunt. That is, uh, he's very lucky that it's a ball. I thought it was a strike, but we've seen that Sh um, Shortwater does not call the strike up if he well, catches the play. Why would you do that? Well, Matt Williams has been on Harper to not bunt as much. He had been doing that a lot when he was struggling a couple of weeks ago. But there's no. This is not the situation to bunt. David Wright's not that far back. One one. Harper hits one out to right. LaRoche tags at third. He's coming. Granderson's throw to the plate. Not in time. And the Nats tie the game. Bryce Harper with the sacrifice fly gets the tying run in. And it's one to one in the seventh. Well, Harper made the adjustment there. Tries to do the same dip de do right here on the inside corner. Jams him a little bit, but Harper didn't quit on it. Got enough on it. To get the run in. And Granderson kept it low enough so that Desmond couldn't go to third. Absolutely. And that's huge because Desmond represents the go ahead run. Those are the things that just get totally ignored by any game story, any defensive metric. Right. But Granderson, if he had airmailed the throw, Desmond's now at third base and could score on and out. Here's Wilson Ramos, one for two. And he lines one into center field a base hit. Desmond will go to third and he'll again be held up there. This time Lagaris with a perfect throw to the cutoff man. But the third hit of the inning for the Nationals and now Desmond's the third with one out. And Dan Worthen will take a visit to the mound. Ramos with his second hit of the night. Franzen is the next batter with a big redeemer here. This could be the big redeemer for Franzen. 
The entire Mets infield will group around Worthen and Cologne. Well, you got to you got to think about this. Franson doesn't have tons of speed. Franson had a fantastic year last year as a pinch hitter, so he's a good situational hitter. Um, no speed at first. So you don't have to worry about the steal. Right here, if you're Cologne, you're trying to get the ground ball. You got to play the corners in. I believe the corners will be in. The middle infielders will be a double play depth. Maybe a little closer. You've got too much speed at third base in Desmond. Uh, it's going to be tough to throw him out on a slow roller. Except you got to know your, your your base runners. They're going to the Mets are going to play back for two. Yeah, I think in the, if it's the ninth inning, maybe you do it differently. But in the seventh inning. Correct. I think that's the way you go. Friends in line to single to right that Granderson trapped in the third. Then he struck out looking in the fifth. Desmond the go ahead run at third. Ramos at first and one out. Franzen takes a strike. It was Kevin Franzen's dropped fly ball that gave the Mets their only run in the fourth inning. And now the Nats have drawn even for Jordan Zimmerman. And clearly with the pitcher on deck, this is the key out for Cologne. There is warm up action in the Nats bullpen, but it's hard to believe they'll bat for Zimmerman. That's it out to left. That'll get the run in. Den Decker moves back. Desmond tags at third. The throw goes to second, and the Nats take the lead. And Franzen has his redeemer. So Franzen with the sacrifice fly, the second of the inning for Washington, and it puts the Nats in front. And Lagares' error on the throw to the cutoff man looms large. Some nice at bats this inning against Cologne, who's been on top of his game. The more and more I see this Wilson Ramos, he can swing the bat. So now Jordan Zimmerman will take a turn at bat. He's in front in this game, two to one. Well, Garris learned a lesson today, and I've seen it happen with a lot of outfielders who can throw. He came in with the attention that he was going to have to throw to home plate. He realized the coach wasn't going to send him, so he eased up. And if you ease up, the ball sails on you. Go through with the proper technique that has made you one of the best throw throwers in, in center field in the major leagues. Well, his reputation precedes him. Twice they stopped runners at third to not test his arm, but it was on a routine play, missing that cutoff man that. Ended up costing the Mets the run. Desmond got to second, moved to third on the base hit by Ramos, and was able to score on Franzen's hit. Franzen with the sacrifice fly to get the run home. One and two to Zimmerman is 0 for 2 today. And he taps one slowly, right with the chart, makes the bare hand play. Tough call. Oh. And he got him at first base. Very difficult play for David Wright, and he gets Jordan Zimmerman, who ran hard all the way. Matt Williams might want to challenge this close call at first base. Brian Gorman, the crew chief, made the call at first, and they already know they're not going to challenge. So nice, that was quick. Nice scoop by Lucas, too. Terrific play by David. So the Nats get two. Second one was unearned, and that puts Washington in front two to one. Seventh inning stretch at City Field.
charging play, barehanding that slow roller by Jordan Zimmerman. And recently we talked to David about that kind of play. Well, for me, it's about uh, first and foremost still trying to read a hop where I feel like I can feel it, especially barehanded. Uh, the easier ones are the ones that are kind of rolling on the ground, you know, that aren't you know, hopping too much, and uh, the first thing I want to do is try to go in with, you know, a firm enough grip that, you know, when I catch it, it kind of sticks and doesn't kind of roll around in my hand. Yeah. So, uh, you know, once you get that, you know, then you want to try to throw off your back leg and try to get as much on it as you can. And normally when you throw, the ball kind of bananas a little bit, so you have to you know, have your target area a little, you know, more towards right fieldish and, and try to draw it back to the first baseman so you don't hit the runner running down the line. Fascinating stuff by a master of the art. And if you recall, David learned a lot of that from Sandy Alomar Sr., who worked so hard with David in those early years when Sandy was a coach. Mets now down a run as they bat in the bottom of the seventh. Lucas Duda scored the only Met run after singling with two out of the fourth, came all the way around on the drop fly ball in left field. Kevin Franzen, who dropped that fly, is. Now driven in the go-ahead run for Washington. That's pulled right to LaRoche and it gets on through him. Charging is Cabrera, but no play on Duda. And the Mets have a leadoff base runner. Well, we saw an error by a Gold Glove caliber center fielder in Lagares, and now an error on a Gold Glove caliber first baseman out of LaRoche. Everything he did was right. He's in front of it, but watch him turn his glove. Instead of leaving it open and facing the ball, Keep it rolling, guys. Heads up a little bit, and it tips the side of his glove. Faulkner-esque. Don't see that very often from LaRoche. So due to the tying run at first with nobody out, here's Travis Darno. Darno hit the fly ball that Franzen dropped for the Mets run in the fourth. Also had a base hit his first time up in the second. So the Nats have made two errors. The Mets have made one. Each of the first two errors led to a run. Darno down the right field line. Harper moves over to get it. And due to back to first, one away. So one out and one on. Now Ben Dendecker has been up twice and grounded out both times. Nice time to get his first big hit after being called up. Drew Storin came in behind Zimmerman last week when Zimmerman had a lead. Gosh, and Zimmerman has had, as Ronnie mentioned, all these no decisions. I just wouldn't want to hand the ball off. Would you, Ron? Not yeah. the way he's still throwing well. But it's been part of the issue with Zimmerman is that he just has not been going deep in games. He's averaged just six innings per start, rarely throws over 100 pitches. Remember, Den Decker in his last at bat, it might have been six to three in your scorecard, but he hit it right on the nose. Desmond had him shaded up the middle and was in just the right spot. He lines this one in a right field for a base hit. Duda goes to second, and the Mets have two men on. There's that nice short stroke. From Den Decker that we saw in Philadelphia, right to the ball, and the ball off his bat jumps. Boy, you are right, Keith. That that swing plays. And I'm sorry, I I've got to play this young man every day the rest of the way, even against the left-handers. They got to learn sometime. First hit of this series for Den Decker. So now Lagaris comes up. We saw Franzen redeem himself for his error. Let's we'll see if Lagaris can do the same. Juan is 0 for 2, hit a deep fly ball to center that Taylor was able to track down his last time up. Due to the tying run at second, Den Decker at first and one out. And the dirt stopped nicely by Ramos. And Rendon at third base is playing back. And if Lagares had an idea here to put a bunt down, I wouldn't second guess it. At all. Really, even an RBI situation? Yes, I wouldn't. I, it, look at where he's playing. He puts it down that third base line, and bases are loaded. Throw down to first. Oh, but he's covering, and it goes down the line. Duda will be held at third, Den Decker to second. Ramos throwing behind the back runner, but LaRoche was not covering. 
Well, that's a play that's put on. So obviously, LaRoche had to go to fall asleep or didn't see the sign. Well, uh, as a catcher, when you're coming up throwing, no, they wouldn't have had him. I mean, you got to see that he's not there and just eat it. Boy, some sloppy play here late by the Nationals. So an error on Ramos, the second of the inning and the third of the night for Washington. And now runners at second and third with one out. With the Mets down a run in the seventh. So both teams a little sloppy tonight. And it's led to most of the scoring. Mets trying to take advantage of this latest one. One and one to Lagares infield back at second and short. And he's hit in the back again. Boy, Lagares has been like a pincushion lately. And he is very unhappy. Well, this is right between the numbers, isn't it, Chief? Nope, they wanted to come inside. That's smart. That's six times now that Lagares has been hit by a pitch, and a lot of those have come in recent days. Now the bases are loaded. Matt Williams is on his way out. Is Storin going to come in for Zimmerman again? He is. So same scenario as last week. Zimmerman will leave with the lead. Storin will come in with men on base. Two to one, Washington in the seventh. Ends up the base is loaded one out and Flores coming up. The call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon. We'll be right back to City Field. Of leads so far has given up just an unearned run, but he's out after 87 pitches, and again it's Drew Storin to come on to relieve him. Well, I'll tell you, that's a starting pitcher. That's a hard game to have to leave. You're probably saying to yourself, why don't you take the guys out that are throwing the ball around? But Storin here is a guy that can strike out a hitter, also can get a ground ball. Wilmer Flores, the batter, with the bases loaded, one out. Kirk Newenheis on deck to pinch hit. Due to the tying run at third, Dendecker the go-ahead run at second, Lagaris at first, one out. And Flores, it's a slow ground ball. Rendon is going to come home with it, gets the force there. The relay not in time. And the inning continues. So Flores going after the first pitch, grounds into a 5-2 force play for the second out. For a wise pitch, Ronnie. Sinker down and in. Trying to get the ground ball and does. I think that's why Storm was brought in. He's got sinking action on both his fastball and slider. 
Matt Williams thinking he's going to keep the ball on the ground and Rendon makes the proper play with the force out at home. So now it's new and heist to pitch it. Kirk has been terrific as a pinch hitter, seven for 19, and he's up in a big spot here. Bases loaded, two down. Mets down a run in the seventh. And he takes the breaking ball up and away for ball one. Well, Storm is not out of the woods yet. Den Decker, Lagares, and Flores, the base runners. Bullpen, bunch of spectators. One and zero to New and Heiss. And Kirk swings through a fastball. One and one. Boy, good sinker. Got to make, got to make him get it up. But you got to be. I like the aggressiveness. New and Heiss has shown the ability to get the ground ball to the right, left, to the left side of the infield, and Desmond's given him that hole. Now Thornton, the lefty, up in the Nats bullpen. 1 1 to New and Ice. And tight. 2 and 1. Well, here comes a dicey pitch right here. He's going to go right back to that Sue Seamer away, Keith. A little sink. Yeah. I agree. It's a bread and butter. And I just would, I don't believe that Desmond is playing up the middle as much as he, as he is right now at shortstop. I think he should be more straight up. 2 1 from Storin. And New and Ice swings over that one. Two and two. Well, he hasn't thrown him a strike yet. The difficult part always when the bases are loaded for a pitcher is that there's pressure on the pitcher if the hitter allows that to happen. But the hitter also feels the pressure and wants to be aggressive. Now it's two and two. That change up up and he fouled it back. Jerry's familiar getting ready for the eighth inning. Now the Mets have been gifted here in the seventh inning. Two errors, a hit batsman, a base hit. But New and Heist trying to avoid leaving them stranded. The big deep breaths by Drew Storen. Again, the 2 2. And he just got a piece of that slider. Good at bat by Neuenheis. He had two pitches to hit there. Fastball up and that down and in slider. We see in the outfield when you go to them, France in the left field, an infielder by trade. Um, and, and Michael Taylor is supposed to have one of the best arms and best center fielders uh, prospects. And a right field, Harper has a gun. 2 2. And New and Ice is down on strike. Storen gets him with a changeup. And the Mets give the gift back in the seventh. Two errors, a hit batsman, and a base hit. And the Mets do not score in the bottom of the seventh. This time Storen bails out Zimmerman. And the Nats lead 2 to 1 going to the eighth. Thank you for that.
his last time out for the Cardinals. Thanks to our, to our Toyota tweet of the game. We asked you should the re-injury of Jeremy Hefter change the way the Mets handle Matt Harvey. And uh, there's an absolutely. Yep. And a no. Hefter was unlucky. Shouldn't read too much into it. Different age. And one more. No reason to rush Harvey back this year. No. Which has kind of been the Mets feeling all along. Yep. Meet Joe Cool. Nice to see you, Joe. Here's Jerry Reese familiar to pitch the eighth inning. Will be the judge of you, Joe. Do uh, you see the numbers here for Familia, who has, of course, been outstanding uh, since the middle of May, really? Michael Taylor mm -hmm. struck out three times mm -hmm. against Bartolo Colon. This time tries to drop down a bunt and fouls it off. Colon went seven through 89 pitches, two runs, one earned, six hits, one walk, eight strikeouts, and that might be enough to beat him. Cologne lowered his ERA from 3.97 to 3.85 tonight. And Taylor takes a slider that just misses. A ball and a strike. Taylor, Cabrera, and Rendon against Familia in the eighth. Last time we saw Jay Reese, he was getting a four out save in Philadelphia day before yesterday. And if you're wondering, Henry Mejia is just fine. Tyler Clifford getting ready to pitch the bottom of the eighth for Washington. Late swing foul. Yes, Henry. Henry he's, he's always got a tip on a snowstorm, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he's got that hoodie on when it's 95 degrees, so. One and two to Taylor. In the hole, tough play for Flores against Taylor's speed. And Duda picks it out beautifully. That's a tough pick for Duda. And they get the speedy Taylor for the first out. Very shaky backhand by, by uh, Wilmer there. An in between hop. Hmm. Nicely done by Lucas. Working from the bottom up. Excellent. You go to the head of the class. <laughs> Lucas with a smile. I'll tell you what, his defense has been awfully good. I mean, that play he saved an error. I mean, that's a flat out E6. And he saved the shortstop. Sometimes you need saving. One out and nobody on. Here's as Dribble Cabrera, who's 0 for 3. You know what it is? We're seeing Lucas smile more. We're seeing more personality. He's becoming more relaxed, like he belongs in the big leagues. Next thing you know, soliloquies. No, that's not so <laughs> crazy. <now. laughs> Cabrera's had uh, good swings all night long. I know he has nothing to show for it. Cabrera three hits last night. One of the better games he's had since joining the Nationals. Josh Edgen ready in the bullpen for LaRoche, who is two batters away. 1-1 one, one from Familia. And he's ahead on Cabrera, 1-2. And he's grabbing the stands. No glove either. Mets hat, Mets jersey. David Wright's number. Nicely done. Anthony Rendon waits on deck. Mets got an unearned run in the fourth. The Nats scored two. One of those unearned in the seventh. Quick pitch by Familia is up and away. Two and two. Mets had a chance to cash in on a couple of Nationals errors in the bottom of the seventh. Did not. And so Terry Collins finds his team behind by a run in the eighth. Washington has six hits. The Mets have five. There have been four errors in this game. The Nats have made three of the four. 
2 2. Drilled to deep right field back toward the corner and it's out of here. That was Dribble Cabrera with his first National League home run. His 10th home run of the year and he extends the Nationals lead to 3 to 1. So Cabrera in his 39th at bat for the Nationals hits his first home run with his new team. Three hits last night. He had good swings all night long against Bartolo Colon. Nothing to show for it. And he catches familiar. Hanging slider. Didn't do much, did it? And like I said, when those hanging sliders come, they're the ones that get pulled. Why? Because when you hang it, you lose velocity. Allows the hitter to get that barrel out and turn on it. Only the second home run allowed this season by Jerry's Familia in 59 and two thirds innings of work. But the Nats have the knack for the long ball in this ballpark. And Cabrera just the latest. Rendon one for three tonight. He fouls one off. And that one caught Travis Darno, and he's slow getting up. I think it almost it looked like it caught him on the outside of the left foot. I don't know how that's even possible. Oh, toe, toe, left toe. Those hurt, folks. Ray Ramirez, the trainer, out for a look because it hits right on the tip. So you can imagine the tip of your, the bone there. Well, whatever toe was hit, it hurts. If it hits your nail on top. It still hurts, but when you hit the tip, that's the home run there by Cabrera. With that home run, the Nats have now out homered the Mets at City Field 27 to 4 in the last 10 games played between these teams in this park. Darno mm -hmm. trying to shake it off. So it's not surprising the Nats have won all nine. Of these previous meetings and going for 10 in a row tonight. One and one to Rendon with LaRoche on deck. And a slider at the knees, one and two. One time silver slugger as Dribble Cabrera has not been having a good offensive year, but he contributes a big home run tonight. Flores plays the hop and throws out Rendon two away. Drive around the majors brought to you by Cadillac. This afternoon, Red Sox behind Mike Napoli's three RBIs beat the Reds five to four. Cincinnati's been struggling. The Giants snap a five game losing streak. Jake Peavy snaps a 12 game losing streak. And the Giants beat the White Sox 7 to 1. And the Cardinals behind Justin Masterson up on Miami 4 0 in the eighth. Also tonight, the Braves lead the Dodgers 3 2 in the sixth. Atlanta's lost 11 of their last 13, enabling the Nats to open up a five game lead, their largest lead of the season in the NL East. Here's LaRoche. Roche got the two run rally started for the Nats in the seventh with a long double to right center. One for two in a walk tonight. Josh Edgen continues to loosen. Vic Black joins him. You got the right hand hitter Desmond on deck and then the left hand hitter Harper. It's interesting how the Mets have consistently pitched the Roche and hurt them um, away, away, away. Very rarely do they come inside. So Cologne do it once, but he missed on a 3 2 pitch and walked him back in the fourth. And Familia keeps it away, 2 and 1. Be the first changeup I've seen from Familia in some time. 88 mile an hour changeup. Fastball away, three and one. Mm -hmm. 
full count. Well, the Mets and Nats opened the season here. Steven Strasburg, who has not faced the Mets this season, will get his first look at the Mets tomorrow night. Three two coming to LaRoche with two out and he walked him. Third time in a row LaRoche has been on base. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by State Farm. The State Farm agent of the day is Pat Cauley. Give him a call. By Nissan. Get the Nissan bottom line event today for great offers on their most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by City. Every time the Mets hit a home run at City Field, City will make a $2,000 donation to a local community partner, courtesy of the City Thank You Home Runs for Community program. Ian Desmond up with two out and a runner at first. Desmond one for three. Single to center in the seventh. Moved up alertly when Ligaris's throw went off the glove of the cutoff man Duda. And then came in to score later on a sacrifice fly by Kevin Franzen to put the Nationals in front. And a walking lead by LaRoche and he walks into second base. He just kept on walking thinking well maybe Familia is not going to pay attention and he was right. Well Duda's off the bag. Oh. Not paying any attention. Familia not paying any attention. Falling asleep at the wheel in a 3 1 game. Uh, the Mets. Second stolen base of the year for LaRoche. So he's in scoring position with two out a one and one count. To Desmond. Flores gets in front of it. And throws out Desmond to end the inning. But the Nats extend their lead as Dribble Cabrera with his first National League home run. Tenth of the year for Cabrera. And the Nats lead at 3 1 as we go to the bottom of the eighth at City Field.
Bryce Harper moves from right field to left field. Denard Span comes in to play center. And Michael Taylor moves from center field to right field. And the Nats set up Manton and Clippert comes on to pitch the bottom of the eighth. Well, Rising Files numbers. Uh, uh, every single year it seems that Clifford uh, does the same thing. He pitches in close to 65 games. He's always pitching the eighth inning setting up Rafael Soriano and a lot of times he's going through the middle of the opponent's lineup as he's going to do here with the Mets and Granderson up. Henry Mejia alongside Vic Black in the Mets bullpen. Top of the batting order Curtis Granderson one for three on the night. And he hits the first pitch in the air behind first base. Who's going to get it? Cabrera. Oh, with a nice reaching grab, oh. and he tumbles over the railing. And he holds on. As Dribble Cabrera, who just did his first Nationals home run, now makes a spectacular play. Well, he knows he's up against it right there. That's just fearless. And that's a heck of a play. Well, we've talked since the day this ballpark opened how dangerous this spot on the field is with that low wall. You know, he knew where he was going, but watch he puts his right hand down, kind of balanced, so he didn't fall as hard as he could have fallen. What a beautiful play. You know what? Selling out to win a ball game. You've got to love it. So a big play by. Cabrera against Granderson on the first pitch that Tyler Clippers throws. Now it's Daniel Murphy. And he takes the curveball low and end for ball one. Murphy 0 for 3 tonight. Murphy had a couple of hits last night, his 44th multiple hit game this season. The Mets' record for multiple hit games is 75. Lance Johnson did that. 1996 when Lance had 227 hits the major league record for multiple hit games 85 Al Simmons did that for the 1925 Philadelphia A's pretty good player huh pretty good hitter I think Al hit 390 plus that year that the that great Connie Mack team Clifford ahead on Murphy one and two that's box score presented by Ford that's have had just five hits tonight the run scoring on a drop fly ball. That's at a golden chance in the seventh. Bases loaded, one out, but Drew Storen came in and got two huge outs, getting Flores on a fielder's choice and striking out Neuenheis. One two coming to Murphy. Whoa. And that sells the change up from Clippard. Two and two. Yes, sir. Got away from him. Excellent analysis, Keith. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> 2 2 to Murphy. Lifted down the left field line. And that goes out of play. Still 2 and 2. Tomorrow night, the final game of this series. Our coverage begins at 6 o'clock. I misspoke before. I said the Mets had to face Strasburg this year. They did face an opening day here. Yeah. So they're going to face him for the second time this season. It was a blur. It was the opening day. You know, it's, there's so much pageantry. You forget about all that stuff yeah. happens all at the same time. Ooh. Murphy goes down on strikes as Clifford blows him away for the second out. Just a fastball, and it's right down the pipe. So two out and nobody on now David Wright. David one for three on the night had a base hit back in the first tried to stretch it into a double and was thrown out by furlongs by Kevin Franzen. Then he lined one to left his last time up and Franzen made a sliding catch. Clippard knows what he's doing out there. I'll tell you, folks. He he adds and subtracts as any uh, about as good as any eighth inning guy in the, in the game. Fastball to start David off. He'll change a little speed here on the second one. And David has his second base hit of the night. He'll stop at first base this time. <laughs> well, he gets Duda up there with a chance to tie it. 
hanging curveball from Clippard. So now Duda, who's one for three on the night, last time up at one at the feet of LaRoche that trickled through the wickets for an error. Very interesting because Clippard really wants to get Duda out with his changeup. But how is he going to get there, he and Ramos? We're going to start fastball away. Well, Clippard has had Duda's number. Lucas is 0 for 11 against Tyler Clipper. And you can see not quite as bit large a shift with the force out in order. It's a different Duda though, Gary, right now than the past. Mm -hmm. From Clipper and Duda hits one in the air to center. Span eases over and he gets there to end the inning. So a base hit and one left that sends us to the ninth. That's three. Mets one. Gentlemen, we'll see you shortly. SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State dealers. Visit them on the web at searchmercedes.com. Vic Black comes on to pitch for the Mets in the top of the ninth. See his numbers. But Keith, you were saying something interesting about Black uh, that you liked recently watching him throw. I think he's been throwing his fastball more. He throws very hard, Ron. He's. And it sets up his breaking ball more. He can get in ahead of hitters, and then he gets ahead of hitters with that curveball. They're in a world of trouble. Mm. Bryce Harper leads off in the top of the ninth. Harper delivered a sacrifice fly to get the tying run in in the seventh inning. Black's last outing was Sunday in Philadelphia. He had a rough go of it, gave up two runs in two thirds of an inning. And that one goes to the backstop 1 0. Harper, Ramos, and Span for the Nationals in the ninth. A 
Rafael Soriano starting to loosen in the Nationals bullpen, getting ready for the save chance in the bottom of the inning. And Black misses high with a curveball, two and zero. Oh. Well, most of that I say he's throwing more fastballs. Ronnie throws two curveballs first pitch. There's Soriano getting ready to face Darno, Dendecker, and Lagares in the bottom of the inning. He's fastball two and one against left handers Ron he's been able to throw that knee high outside corner strike with his fastball. And Harper with a big rip two and two. I mean, at some point, if you're Harper, no matter what age you are, if you consistently get beat by the same pitch, it's got to be something that's got to be worrisome. Two and two to Harper leading off in the top of the ninth. And Black misses low, full count. Tola Colon went seven terrific innings tonight, but he's on the hook in this game. Give up two runs, only one earned on six hits, a walk and eight strikeouts. So far tonight, that's enough to beat him. Jerry's familiar, gave up the home run to Cabrera in the eighth. Three two to Harper, and he saws one foul uh, there inside the line, and that's an infield hit. Well, with right playing off the line, even if David feels that cleanly, Harper's got himself. An easy hit. That is a cue ball. That's off. It's a sidewinder. And really, no chance to throw out Harper. And really, just want to keep the ball in the infield. There, a little risky with the bare hand. No chance to throw anybody out. That ball got by David. It's a double or a single on air. So now Ramos, who already has two hits tonight. What else is new? He's got a nice swing, Gary. Yeah, but he doesn't hit 380 against the rest of the league. And Black jams him and he fouls it off. Now, coming up tonight after the postgame show, it's Geico Sports Night. Chris Carlin will be on hand. Origami Rex Wright. How much paper does that take? A lot of folds. Not as many as there used to be, but still. I remember the Oregon. With only one stolen base on the year, caught twice. Fastball beat Ramos, so and two. Up and in. Off the plate. Tough to hit that one. Denard Span is on deck for his first at bat of the night. 0 2 from Black, and Ramos pokes it foul. One thing that Ramos does, he does go up the middle, Gary, and with two strikes, he's looking to go the other way to protect the plate, which you have to do with two strikes. I think the Mets throw him too many strikes when they get ahead of him. I haven't seen them bounce one yet. You saw the pitch up and in, Keith. That's another place you can go. Strikes him out on a curveball in the dirt, and that's the first out of the inning. Nice call, RJ. Well, I, I just see him as a very aggressive hitter, and that's what one of his strengths is. So you have to use that against him. So one out and one on, and now Span, who had the night off tonight after seeing his 36 game on base streak stopped last night, Matt Williams figured it was a perfect time to sit him down. 
He also was 0 for 10 against Bartolo Colon, so it all worked out the way Williams wanted it to. Now he came in the game for defense, and Span gets his first plate appearance of the night. He also had a 14 game hitting streak snapped. Harper at first and one out. And Span hits one out to right field, chasing Granderson back in the gap, and he runs it down. Nice play by Granderson for a long second out. Just enough off the away enough off the end of the bat a little bit enough off the end of the bat. That's an interesting play by one a good play by Granderson interesting play by Bryce Harper who went back to tag on that ball. Get it span only has one home run on the year not a lot of power. What's this? I mean, there's no way you know Granderson is going to catch this baseball. And as it was, he went back too late. So two out. Harper still at first, and now Scott Harrison will be the pinch hitter. Harrison appeared as a pinch hitter last night and struck out against Buddy Carlisle. And a fastball strike to Scott. That's allowed Darno, Dendecker, and Lagaris coming up in the bottom of the ninth against Rafael Soriano. Good strike. And a fastball strike, and it's 0 and 2. He's locating that fastball better, Ronnie. I mean, it, it's a perfect pitch. I mean, when you work on the side, if you're a starting pitcher, those two pitches that you want to throw those all day long. That's what you work for. Two perfect outside strikes. 0 2 from Black. This is away. Harrison keeps the inning going. Michael Taylor would be next. A different kind of a day for Taylor. After he made it look easy in his debut last night, is Soriano getting ready? Soriano's numbers are fantastic, but if you watch his games, he doesn't seem so fantastic. He, um, let's just say there's not a lot of one-two-three innings in, in, in the way he goes about his business, but he usually gets the job done. And tired of waiting, takes a step out. San Diego beat Colorado again tonight. Reimer Liriano, top prospect for the Padres, hit his first big league home run tonight. San Diego's been playing so well. That's five straight wins and 11 of their last 14. In the second half, they beat the Mets two out of three to start it. Colorado now 18 and 43 mm -hmm. on the road. Wow. Harper runs, strike three. Har Harrison is struck out to end the inning. So Black works around the leadoff infield hit, and the Mets come up in the bottom of the ninth against Soriano, down three to one.
photo. Well, that couldn't be cuter, could it? <laughs> very, very sweet. Thank you for sharing. Rafael Soriano getting for his 27th save of the year. Well, 40 of his 46 appearances have been scoreless. On July 27th, he joined the 200 save club. So he's fashioned out quite a career. He's been known to cough it up a few more than a few times. He can get wild. Yeah. Soriano now 34 years old. Travis Darno leads off and takes a slider off the plate for ball one. Darno one for three tonight. Dan Decker and Lagares to follow. Well, the Nationals have the second best staff ERA in the National League. One of the reasons why is that Nationals pitchers have yielded the fewest walks and the fewest home runs in the National League. And the best strikeouts to walk ratio. And in the two games of this series, Nationals pitchers have combined to walk none and give up no home run. So there you go. Two and two to Zarno. Soriano has a fastball, 90 plus. That slider that you saw him bounce to Darno, and a split finger that he will use against the left-handed hitters. Two two, driven to deep left field. Back goes Harper, looking up, and it's out of here. Travis Darno leads off the ninth inning with a home run. And the Nats lead is cut to three to two. Ten home runs for Darno, the first Mets rookie catcher ever to hit double digit home runs. And he hasn't been here all year. You said it, Chief. You might have the staff, but Soriano is vulnerable. He makes too many mistakes for my liking, and this is impressive because most of Darno's home runs have been off hanging breaking balls that he's pulled. This one is a guy that throws hard, and he turned on a fastball. Only the second home run Soriano's allowed this year. Dendecker lines a base hit, and now the Mets have the tying run aboard with nobody out. Second hit of the night for Matt Dendecker. And now the Mets have it working in the ninth inning. Short stroke. Good pitch. Right down in there. This guy's got to play. So now what do you do with Lagares? Do you punt with him? You play for the tie at home. Play for the win on the road. It's... I can't second guess one way or the other. Let him swing the bat. Nats are not looking for the bunt. They've got Rendon back at third base. Tying run at first and nobody out. And he is squaring. Drops it down foul. Just amazing that Rendon would not be in. Uh, whether you don't think he's going to bunt or not, it's a possibility. Yeah. And he's going to go back again. Wilmer Flores on deck. Pitcher spot behind him. Newenheis has already been used. And Rendon is not playing in. Look at that at third base. Now, now he's coming in. Better. And Lagares pops up the bunt, and Soriano's got it for the first out. That is a big out. And Lagar is such a good bunner, too. <laughs> Little flat slider just pops it up. Well, he could have dropped it and got two. Lagares was not running. He's holding the bat in his hand and took three jogging steps out of the box. You're right. If Soriano drops it, he's, he gets a double play. So here's Flores, who's 0 for 3. 
Came up with the bases loaded and one out in the seventh. Swung at the first pitch and grounded into a force play at the plate. And they're guarding the lines, both corner infielders, and very wisely throwing over. Dendecker can steal a base. Yeah, he had a big lead over there, and Soriano takes forever to deliver the ball to home. Eric Campbell out on deck. He'll be the pinch hitter. After Flores, it takes the cutter off the plate for ball one. That's the throw over yep. just the fist and he didn't see it. Wow. Surprised his catcher. And now it's two and oh. I have never seen. Well I have. But it just seems like Soriano never has a clean inning. And yet the numbers are stupendous. Low hit total low walk total only the second home run he's allowed this year was to Darno in this inning. 2-0. Flores swings at the high fastball, two and one. Good rip by Flores, two and zero. Oh, hitters count. What a rip! Under it. Flores has one home run this year. It was a grand slam in Philadelphia. Fastball away. Probably going to cut it again. Driven to center field. Span will have to play it on the hop. Dendecker's going to try to go first to third. Span's throw is cut off. And the tying run is on third with one out. Wilmer Flores comes through. Well, made the adjustment. Fastball away. Doesn't try to pull it. Beautiful. This is a this is a, a kitty Mets inning right here. Nicely done by Den Decker, never hesitating first to third. Eric Young Jr. running for Flores, carrying the winning run at first base. Eric Campbell, who had a sacrifice fly last night for the Mets only run as a pinch hitter, will come up with the tying run at third, the potential winning run at first. Now, if you're the Mets. With Soriano and how slow he is to the plate, do you have Young try and run early in the count? I mean, that's his strength. That's how he plays the game. Are you aggressive? That's the winning run at first base. I would hate to have him thrown out. And right, right now, a sacrifice fly ties the ball game. I would hold him. There he goes. There he goes. First pitch thrown by Ramos, not nearly in time, and a good job by Cabrera to keep that ball from going into center field. That's one of the best plays I've seen by a second baseman in some time. He caught it in between his legs and Young, who got a huge jump. No chance to throw him out. Watch how he catches this and try to tag between his legs. Well, he wasn't sure he caught it either. That's an educated guess right there. So EY, who's played very little, comes in the game and first pitch gets a huge stolen base, his 27th of the year, and now a base hit could win it for New York. Infield in. Little wow. less than halfway up the middle. Infield in with the winning run at second. I, uh, I hear you. Wow. 0 1 to Campbell. Ground ball to short. Coming home with it. Desmond for the tag. And Dendecker's out. And that's the second out of the inning. Mm. So it pays off for Matt Williams. Terry Collins is going to come out. Perhaps to say that Ramos was blocking the plate. Oh, well, let's see. Well, the throw brings him. Is there any place? No. For... He was set up early with that left foot blocking the plate. No, he's on the line. That's ridiculous. If they're going to overturn this, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Well, the rule's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but they're going to look at it. Yep. I mean, he's on the line. Look at his half. What is it? 10%, 5% of his body is on the line. Everything else is in foul territory. Stupid. Well, we've seen it all year. But but you can understand Terry Collins taking a shot. Oh, sure. Absolutely. You've got to take you know? advantage of the rule as it's written. And the rule is just absurd. Just ridiculous. I mean, I hope. 
the major league it's baseball. not a challenge by Terry Collins this is no. the umpires reviewing yes. based on what they've been told if this is a close play let the folks in the replay center take a look right. and try and make a judgment as to whether Ramos was blocking the plate before he had the ball and he even moves out of the way with the tag he well, pulled that, the that, matador there. That's irrelevant. It's what I know, happens I know. before he gets the ball. I know. Is he blocking the plate before he has the ball? The throws into the line a little bit. What are you supposed to do? And this is not the field umpire's call, obviously. It's the call in uh, New York. Boy, Den Decker with that hard slide almost knocked the ball free. And, of course, he was within his rights to run over the catcher yes. if he wanted to because he was blocking Look the at the plate. throws into the line, too, Gare. So here we go. Yes, the and proper they call. The out call. The proper call. Good, good job, guys. Sorry, Met fans. Don't get mad at me. But now on that play, Eric Young throws at second base. Den Decker, <laughs> I think, was trying to draw the call. That's why he slid right into the foot of Ramos, hoping that that would accentuate the call. But the Mets don't get the benefit of it. So now the Mets are down to their final out. The tying run is now at second. And the potential winning run at first. And Curtis Granderson, the batter. Infield playing pull on Granderson. Desmond up the middle. Granderson one for four tonight. And a ground ball. Soriano's got it. And the Nationals beat the Mets at City Field for the 10th straight time. Travis Darno's home run gets the Mets closer. They get the tying run to third with one out, but unable to get that run home. And the Nationals hang on to win it three to two. Well, how do you explain this game? Mets had lots of chances uh, against Matt Williams' team, but it always seems like the Nationals come up with a big pitch or a big hit or a home run, and they did it again tonight. Ten straight, as Gary said, and another home run by Cabrera. Well, the save goes to Soriano, and it was a nail biter for that manager right there but Drew Storen came in in a very tough spot in relief of Jordan Zimmerman and that was back in the seventh inning and with the bases loaded and pitched out of it so just a heck of a ball game that's wound up 0 for 14 these last two games with runners in scoring position you saw the game summary brought to you by New York's 529 college savings program Nats have taken the first two of the series they win 3-2 tonight. More coming up in just a moment.